makes you laugh? Well, I, I, uh, I still love, of course, the people who are uh, timeless and tested. Steve Martin, Lily Tomlin, Woody Allen, um, uh, Albert Brooks. Mel Brooks, when he's just talking, right. I just, I mean, he's, I mean, that, that's better than any movie he, he made it for my money. Um, and, uh, and among people who are uh, less known, but somewhat known, Mitch Hedberg. I used to do drugs. I still do, but I used to too. <laughs> I like because of the odd left field nature of his brain. He's kind of like a, a Stephen Wright with, with a little something extra going on. And I love Stephen Wright. So I get off the plane and I forgot to undo my seatbelt and I'm pulling the plane through the terminal. And, uh, and uh, Lewis Black. Who, oh, I love who, Lewis. Just yeah. wonderful uh, control uh, of, his, of his words. There's no such thing as bad language. I don't believe that anymore. It's, it's ridiculous. We are adults. These are the words that we use to express frustration, rage, anger in order that we don't pick up a tire and beat the shit out of something. And, uh, and then um, there, uh, Norm MacDonald, for instance, forget, a, forget the sitcom. Look, Taylor, I don't think you understand. You're a huge whore. <laughs> forget the news on Saturday Night Live. Thanks, I'm Norm MacDonald, and now the fake news. Well, it is finally official. Murder is legal in the state of California. <laughs> But his stand-up, well, again, what kind of a strange right. left-field thing, and that appeals to me. Those are the ones I think of when I answer the question. I... To George Carlin? Can I, no, I'll be completely honest. To George Carlin. If you're not completely honest, this is what he told me. You have to say all. to George Carlin, I can't listen. He said. All right, I'll listen to George to Carlin. time I was getting on a plane and uh, a few miles down from me I saw George Carlin and well he yeah he was a few miles ahead of me and I, I you know I'd never met him before so I didn't want to bother him and I sat down and then he, he gets up from his chair and he starts he looks at me and is walking toward me and I got so excited I thought George Carlin, he wants to talk to me. And he comes over to me and he says, uh, I got to work on some stuff. I'm writing. I got to read something and then I'm going to take a nap so I can't talk to you. And he walked. It was like basically he went out of his way to tell me to go fuck myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, wasn't he but, just being courteous? Because yeah. otherwise he would have said, I would talk to you. Yes. Yeah. But at when it was getting near the end of the flight, when they announced that we we're going to be uh, descending soon, uh, he came over to me again and he scribbled his phone number down on a piece of paper and he said to me, uh, next time you're appearing on TV, I want you to call me and tell me because I want to see what's going on in that brain of yours. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that was like, holy fuck. And the funny thing is I had, you know, George Carlin's number, which and I thought that was like a tremendous thrill. George Carlin's a fan. I thought this is unbelievable. I also met Jonathan Winters, and he gave me his phone number, and I didn't call either one of them uh, because I, I've had those. You know what it's like? A couple of celebrities who've given me their numbers, it's like, you know, we meet, and they're my best friend in the whole world. We hit it off like lifelong pals, and then you call them, and you go, hi, it's Gilbert. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> it wore off yes yeah. it, it's kind of to me it's like when you meet a girl 
and you get her phone number and and she's like oh here's my number don't lose this don't lose this and here's here's if i'm not at this number here's my other number please call me call me call me all excited and then you call him up and you go hi you know uh remember we met at uh, joe's party and it's like oh yeah 